Welcome to U.S. Classic Muscle Cars. Enjoy the videos. This car is Shelly. The reason it's called Shelly because it used to be painted shell oil colors, probably in the 50s. And it had shell painted on the door, now it's pretty much faded off. I've had this car 46 years. My name is John Berg, and I bought this car off a gentleman in Donner's Grove, and he had this up in his hunting cabin in Winters, Wisconsin. And everybody always asks about the dual wheels on the back of the car. And the reason for the dual wheels is this gentleman would want to go hunting after the spring thaw. He owns 60 acres inside the Nikolai National Forest in northern Wisconsin. And the only way a private party could own 60 acres inside the National Forest, it went back to a land grant from President Lincoln. He parked this car in Winters, Wisconsin at a gas station all winter long, and when he wanted to go hunting, he would call up there and tell him he's coming up to go hunting. They would get his car ready and make sure it had gas, oil, and was ready to go because it was an eight and a half hour drive to Winters, Wisconsin from Donner's Grove. He would drive up there to uh, Winters unload all of his stuff from his modern car into the Model A and it was 12 miles from town to where he drove off in two ruts in the National Forest and it was another 12 miles to where his cabin was and when it was real muddy he would put tire chains on the outside dually on the other side, you can see where the fenders beat up on the front and the back from the tire chains. And if, if you get stuck with a Model A, a Model A has a hand throttle and a foot throttle. So you can pull the hand throttle down a little, and even if you're just by yourself, the wheels could be spinning. You can walk out in the woods, find a little log to put, put between the dual wheels and if it doesn't catch right away, you take another little log, put it on the back bumper, lift up a little till it catches, then you can run up next to the Model A, jump on the running board, jump in and go. In, this, in the six, 60s, he thought he didn't want to have to pay a gas station to store his car all winter so it would be ready to go for the spring. He bought a four-wheel drive Jeep thinking, oh, I can just drive all the way up from Donner's Grove and drive right in. Well, he told me when I bought this car off him, that didn't work out too well because a Jeep weighs more than a Model A, a Jeep has fatter tires, and it doesn't push through the sandy soil with fatter tires. And the Model A with the dual wheels, it stayed up on top of that sandy soil, and then uh, he could get in and go hunting. Now, the, uh, let's talk about all these different uh Knickknacks that you have. Uh, those are all, I call those my accessories. Uh -huh. Here's a picture of what the car looked like before I started accessorizing it. Okay. And I have lots of accessories, like on the gear shifter, you'll see an extension on the top. The emergency brakes got the, the uh, handle folded up so it's out of the way because I let kids sit in this car. If you look at my signs on the car, it says, Do Touch. And if the cameraman reaches right in there and pulls that pocket watch down, it's right in the center. Oh, move forward a little bit. Move forward. Now pull that down. Look, look, look behind you. There's turn signals. They're painted yellow. And those are actually four years older than the car. The car's a 1931 Model A Ford. Those turn signals have a 1927 patent on it. Oh, really, really? Wow. I have lots of accessories on here. Whatever. Things come and things go. go. And I like this uh, radiator. Sound. Here's another Model A, the same as mine. This is what it looks like when they're restored. Same year. That's a 1931 also. And this is a 1931. When did Ford start building? When was the first car built? Uh, 
And then the, uh, I like your, uh, your radiator set up. That's, that is my antifreeze recovery system. I used to have problems with a Model A does not have a pressurized radiator, and I used to have a can underneath the hood from the overflow, and if you went 9 or 10 miles, you'd have to pour it back in the radiator, and that got old. So I uh, came up with this system. There's a tank all the way in the back on top of the luggage rack back there. Okay. There's an old little gas tank from a lawnmower. And this way, the, if it, I lose antifreeze, it goes up, and it gravity is right back in. John, how are you? Okay, I'm giving an interview right now. Oh, I'm sorry. Your old neighbor, Jim. Yeah. How many, uh, so how many miles do you have on the... Uh, this, this car has 90,531 miles right now. Wow. And then do you have, because the car is not new, do you have AAA? Matter of fact, I do. Do you? There you go. There you go. And then the other question is, I, I see you at so many car shows, which is great. How many uh, miles do you put on going to these car shows? Well, tonight on the way home, I'll turn over 600 miles on the car this summer. Okay, and we're in, the, we're in uh, August. Oh my God, that's right. And so I probably will get another 200 miles on it yet this season, so it'll probably be about 800 about, miles. And what about uh, uh, car awards? Do you get some awards? Oh, I, I, I do get trophies. In the Later in the season, you can't go to these free cruise nights, you go there. For instance, if you're familiar with Ferris Bueller's Day Off, that Ferrari was at a car show I was at about two years ago in Glendale Heights. And I was in the special entrance category and so was he. Well, when they called out second place, he got it. Oh, really? And I don't think he was too happy when they called out first place in my Model A that's not worth anywhere near his $400,000 Ferrari got first place. And then the, uh, what is the, uh, I see you even have an umbrella, I like that. that is well, that, that's an umbrella I just stuck in there, it's usually in the back. Uh -huh. But you see this wheel inside this wash tub? Uh -huh. It's got quarter inch plexiglass on top. That spare tire in front has a bracket mounted in the top of it. And this tube here that, that, that the umbrella is stuck in goes on top of that. Then this double A, the inside of a, a Model A truck wheel, oh, a ton and a half truck, goes on top of it. And then, then on, on that, I have a patio umbrella over the other side of the car that goes on top of that. So when you get to a car show, it's on a blacktop parking lot. I have shade where nobody else does. And then the, um, I guess the last question would be, and maybe we uh, talked about it on my shirt. What size engine do you have? This has the original motor in it. I have many horns on this car. Like this horn here and that horn there are both vacuum horns. If you're familiar with the Pickers, you ever seen the program of the Pickers? They buy stuff off a guy called Hobo Jack. That that horn over there, that vacuum horn, I bought off a of Hobo Jack about five, six years ago in Indianapolis. Oh, wow. wow. And that's what a, that, the red horn is a woof whistle. Okay. And then I have an ammo box bolted underneath the hood there, and that has tools and parts for the distributor. So if you have a problem with the ignition, your tools are right there. You don't have to look for them. You know exactly where they're at. Why don't we wrap up and say thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Everybody calls me Big John. Hey, Big John. And this is Shelly, and she says goodbye. And the kids like you get to sit in there, because I let kids sit in there, because my signs say do touch. Oh, you want to go take a look? At some of these car shows, I'll have 100, 150 kids sit in the car. Now, tell them to pull the... Uh, the Pull that pocket watch down over your head. Pull that down. Pull it down. All right, there you go. There you go. Hey, do it again. One more time. It works a turn signal out here. There's an arrow that comes out. That is so cool. Please enjoy the next video.